Welcome everybody to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today. And this week sees the release of the action horror sequel Tremors Shrieker Island hitting store shelves along with Paramount Pictures is releasing a Blu-ray edition of the 1999 horror remake The Haunting. Ronin Flix is releasing an exclusive Blu-ray edition of the 2019 horror flick Haunt, and... <gasps> Great Scott! The Back to the Future 4K trilogy is coming out as well! Plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we're at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, everybody, we are in at Walmart, and literally there is nothing new whatsoever over here. Like, all of it is just waiting to be put up. Tremors, Shrieker Island, there's none of that. There's none of the Back to the Future trilogy. Some of the other releases this week, yeah, nothing. It's all empty over here, unfortunately. So nothing new over here. I was really hoping it would be like three for three, they would get some really great stuff here at this Walmart, but they have nothing put out so far. However, there is some indie goodness over here that I was not expecting. So kind of weird. They have the indie stuff over here, and the big new titles are not out yet. That makes no sense, but, uh, well, while we're here, and they're right there, let's check them out. Some really cool indie goodness to be checking out, guys. And the first thing I'm seeing over here, they got the DVD digital of Blue Ridge for $9.96. With Jonathan Shack. Okay, man, I, I haven't seen him in something in a while. I kind of like the cover to that. The dead body, and seems like he's having maybe some issues with the people that are in the background possibly maybe i don't know murder in a sleepy town at the heart of the blue ridge mountains refuse a long time feud between two of the community's most powerful families the new sheriff justin wise finds himself in raising his hand to solve the murder before mountain justice takes over into the... oh okay I, I i like these type of movies man where it's kind of like you're trying to go by the law, but also you have to deal with certain families and certain communities and try to sort of work around the politics of it with, with sort of a, a murder hanging in the balance. I've seen some of these type of movies before, man. They always have some really good tension in it, some really, really in interesting commentary. I kind of like that stuff, man. Jonathan Shack, man. Again, I, I remember him from back in the day from like... Well, I mean, he's in DC's Legends of Tomorrow, but I, I remember, remember him from That Thing You Do. That's what I primarily remember him from. But who I also really like that's in here is Graham Greene. It says, of course, he was in Dances with Wolves and The Green Mile, but I also remember him in that movie um, with Mel Gibson Maverick. That I really love, man. It's really funny. He's really great in that, man. He's supposed to be playing this sort of stereotypical token Indian guy. And he sort of is a little more than that. And sort of the hilarity of it. He's good too, man. I don't know. Some good actors in here. Some good story. He doesn't sound, sound half bad, man. Huh. Kind of interesting. Blue Ridge. So bad. Then they also have the DVD of Blood Immortal for $9.96. Ooh, looks like some vampire goodness. Innocence dies. They don't. Well, hell, at least they, they don't sparkle. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. Would I let her suck my blood? Hmm. No. Worse has been done done to me. That's all I'll say. Worse has been done done to to, to me. But I I don't know. I kind of like the daylight. I don't know if I'd want to live in the dark all the time. I don't know. Would you guys? I don't know. Ooh, not a lot of sleep. And uh, you know she's got a little something on her chin there. Just saying. 
The vampire genre gets transcended and elevated in this intimate and equally thrilling saga with three stories that unfold to interlocking episodes. Blood of mortal swords of surgeons and desires that unsettle the lives of its immortal vampire character, the vicious land speculator, Mr. Duncan, subdues an offer of a dying widow and mother, and there's a vicious coercion. Huh. Only one of her students who happens to be secretly a vampire. So it's kind of like, so this is kind of like a horror anthology, but just sort of with all vampire stories, pretty much, right? And it's kind of the vibe that I'm getting off of this. I mean, I love horror anthologies. Horror anthologies are, are awesome. I mean, there's a lot of garbage out there, but there's a lot of really great horror anthologies, too. And I like a good vampire tale, depending. Like, I like a lot of the old-school vampire stuff, Interview with a Vampire and Near Dark and Vamp, Lost Boys, you na- na- name it, man. But it seems like vampires... Recently, I don't know. It seems like vampires are not as great as they used to be. Like the old school stuff is really great, but the new stuff, not so much, man. I mean, some interesting tales, some interesting stories. So it is possible this could be pretty cool, depending. Hmm, Blood Immortals, not bad. Could, could, could be decent, honestly. Then they have the DVD of Amulet for nine ninety six. With Imelda Staunton, really. Barely see her in really any horror flicks. Most people would honestly know her from uh, the Harry Potter flicks. She played um, Dolores Umbridge, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Have faith in fear. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I don't know what the fuck she is. She's like a... Like a... Like a devil bat or something? Or what the, what the fuck is she? I have no idea, man. Tomo the Exolid returns in from a foreign conflict and finds himself strange circumstances under my bed. He's offered a place to stay in a decaying of the house. Her tiny mother. Ooh, something insidious. Very nice. Yeah, I believe it's probably Imelda Staunton if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. I mean, look at that. She's not exactly the most nice l- l- looking lady you'll ever meet in your life, man. Look at that. I- Okay, it's kind of something sinister, hidden under the surface, and he's got to figure out what's going on, but he doesn't really want to go too far deep into it because he wants to kind of get in that chick's pants. <laughs> so, so he's kind of like, oh, I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck between the rock and a hard place. They're like, I don't know what the hell to do. Uh, it doesn't look half bad. I mean, it looks all right. Melda Staunton, though. She hasn't really done much horror movies, has she? I mean, for that, it would be kind of interesting, though. Hmm. Then I'm seeing over here they have the DVD of Redwood Massacre Annihilation for $9.96. Look at that. He's still out there. Man, if he's still out there, then then get me the fuck away from there, man. All I'm saying, look, look at that, dude. That guy, that guy means business, man. Whoa. Oh, and Daniel Harris is in this too. Okay. Another sort of lo- lo- looks like a slasher flick or something. They thought their numbers would help. Uh, dude, when it comes to, to killers, like stalking killers, dude, it doesn't matter whether you got 50 or, or fucking 100, man. You, you ain't going to survive, man. You know, killers know their terrain. They know their areas. It's like, it's like Jason Voorhees, man. I mean, do what you will. The guy's going to hack you up, man. You know, it's how they, how they roll. They thought wrong. Damn right they did. What is this about? A stranger obsessed with the unsolved Redward murders admits a group of bereaved family. The existence. Well, I don't get that. So, so they, so they find out that he's real. But what wasn't that the whole point of going in there was to, was to actually try to find out the truth and actually, actually find that all this stuff is really happening. So, oh my God, you actually found out the truth that is really happening and that he's actually real, and you're shocked by that. 
dude, that's what you went in there in the first place for, and now you're getting killed be, uh, because of it. Look, I get it. You want retaliation. I, I understand it. You, you want this person to come to justice. But look at this dude. Look at this motherfucker. Seriously. Do you think he gives a fuck about about going to jail? Do you th ser ser seriously think he worries about the justice system? Fuck that, man. He, he doesn't give a shit. I mean, he's just going to kill for killing sake. That's what killers do, man. I mean, come on. I mean, I feel bad for him because, I mean, they, they're, they are literally fucked. There's no help in that, man. And it kind of reminds me, again, of all those Friday the 13th movies... You know, the Halloween stuff, or hell, it even reminds me of, um, of the Victor Crowley movies, because, you know, they, they go in wanting to find the legend, and then when they find it, they're like, oh my god, the legend is real, let's get the fuck out of here, and yeah, no shit, man, I mean, it's kind of cool to see Daniel Harris in, in here, and I'm kind of wondering what kind of big role she plays in this, it might be a pretty cool little slasher flick, though, it might, might be all things considered. Huh. Redwood Massacre. I do like Daniel Harris in certain roles. Like, I thought she's been good in the Victor Crowley stuff, though, so... Huh. Doesn't look that bad. Then I'm seeing they have the DVD of House of Shadows for $9.96. Stay in the light. Look at that. Well, that's really great, man. Look, look at that cool thing. I like that. Always a creepy house, man. You know, if you see a creepy house, most likely your first in instinct is right. It's creepy. Stay the fuck away. Okay, that's that's pretty much the guarantee, man. Hmm. Sarah and her boyfriend, Jared, traveled to an isolated house in the Spanish countryside, led there by Sarah's discovery of a family secret following the death of her mother. Where will they meet them? Sarah's... Or... Oh... Okay, so it's kind of like some sort of maybe ghostly spirit or demonic entity or something that's going on there that they tr kind of try to get away from. So it's kind of like almost maybe a spin on, I guess, like Amityville or something, right? Because, I, I mean, there's so many Amityville movies, but there's a hell of a lot of Amityville ripoffs. Like, really, like a lot of movies that are, are not called Amityville, but you might as well, you know, like call them Amityville number 25 or something because they're pretty much the same exact thing just a different name and a slightly different plot i mean it could be cool but i've seen a lot of these man where they're haunted by by something and they got to get out of the house and it's evil and i i've seen a shitload of them man i mean it doesn't look bad but uh i don't know man i've seen a ton ton of them so it's hard to kind of like get me excited for it but it could be de de decent though interesting then over on this i'm seeing another shutter original of scare package for 996 look at this oh i love that cover oh so cool if you don't know the rules you'll never make it out alive oh, 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 oh. look at that oh that's cool man fun and fantastic love letter to horror. Chip Buckley is a lonely horror aficionado spending his days overseeing a struggling video store and arguing with his only customer, Sam. That's really terrible that you have only one customer and you're arguing with him. When an unsuspecting job applicant arrives to teach him the rules of horror. Oh, very nice. Man, this actually kind of looks really fun. This honestly does, man. Huh. Oh, shit, shit, they even got Joe Bob Briggs in this motherfucker. Oh, nice. Oh, you know what, I man? Yeah, the, the cover looks really good because it does remind me of, like, video rental type of store there with, like, the, the VHS boxes. Oh, man, that's really cool. Oh, God, do I miss the old school vi video rental store days? My goodness, man. God, do I miss those days. And you would talk to the talk to the store clerks about other movies, and yeah, you would you would argue with them, and finding out all of the horror rules and the love by by renting the movies and everything. So this kind of reminds me of that, but it's sort of like a fun horror comedy in the mix as well. Oh, that's really cool, man. 
this kind of looks fun. I don't know anything about it, but it looks kind of quirky and fun. And I love the fact that they're they're kind of doing a a horror movie by talking about the horror rules and and the survival stuff. This looks really cool. I don't know if it's like a demonic VHS tape or like the store is like taken over by entities or something. I don't know, but I love it. It's really cool. It kind of looks really really inventive and actually really fun. And I and I love the actual cover art here. It kind of warms my heart as a as a old school video store fan. I gotta admit, this one could be right up my alley. And then over here I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray of the owners for $12.96. The DVD for $9.96. Now, I got a chance to watch the owners on Amazon Prime and I had heard about the synopsis, and I thought to myself, I was like, okay, another sort of home invasion flick. And I thought to myself, okay, I've watched a shit ton of home invasion flicks. Do I really need to watch yet another one? But I was like, look, maybe this is going to surprise me. Maybe I'm going to like it. Why not give it a chance? So I ended up just diving into it and, and, and trying, man. And... Basically, it's about these four individuals, three guys and one girl. The girl is very reluctant to go in, but she does anyways. The guys are trying to steal all the money and all these uh, precious things that are in this doctor's home. And they can't really open up this safe. The doctor ends up coming back, and and they're trying to basically get the information, get the combination, get the stuff, and get out. And basically, a lot of complications happen from there. I really won't spoil it. I really won't dive into it and, and sort of spoil a lot of stuff for you guys. But I got to be real and I got to be honest and say I really didn't love the owners, unfortunately. I, I really didn't. Once you break in, you may never get out. I'm so glad that I got out of this movie, man. I, look... I, it's not a terrible movie to be to be real with you. I mean, the the acting is very good. The atmosphere is really great. Uh, some twists and turns that you I think after you watch it a second time, you kind of know that they're coming, but the first time around you don't. But I think the problem with this movie and, and is that I really didn't like any of these characters. I mean, any of them whatsoever. They didn't come across as sympathetic, they didn't come across as caring, or I understood why they were doing what they were doing. Nothing like that. And so, when things sort of go sideways, I didn't really care. I, I didn't really give a fuck. I mean, I mean that's the, the honest to God truth. I, I really didn't, man. I wanted to care, but at every turn, these characters were making really stupid, idiotic decisions that made no sense and i thought like why are you listening to this one one person he's just he's just manipulating you or why are you trusting the doctor because the doctor is clearly pulling your leg and and stalling and what what the fuck are you doing get out like or why aren't you going out of the the window or why aren't you breaking the window or why aren't you using the hammer that you had to break the door like what the actual fuck man like, there was a lot of times when I just thought, God, if I was in that situation, maybe I would act differently. And I usually don't like to do that with horror films. I usually don't like to do, like, what would I do in that circumstance? But these characters just frustrated me so much, man, that I just really just got pissed off with the, with the movie. Even at the end, I, I was like, oh, man, these people deserve what, what, what they get because they... Like, if they're so easily manipulated like this, then then they they deserve all of the bad shit that, that they deserve, man. And I don't know, maybe I'm getting cynical with horror films. Maybe I am. But with this film, it just really... It just the characters turned me off. And there's clever moments in here, but at the end of the day, I really didn't care, man. And that's unfortunate because it could have been very brilliant and has shades of it. But the problem is, is that they don't explain a goddamn thing. You're frustrated by the non-answer. You're frustrated by the stupidity and the characters. And you just wish, like, God, they would be just a little bit more smarter. But 
that's horror flick for you that if all the characters were this smart uh they probably wouldn't get in into some of this bad shit in the first place but whatever man again the movie's not terrible but boy did i just really i wasn't feeling this movie whatsoever i know a lot of people are going to but man i just i didn't really get get, get into this one unfortunately man i really didn't then the next thing I'm seeing is they have the Blu-ray of Spree for $12.96, the DVD for $9.96, and these motherfuckers are in for a ride of their life, baby. Oh my god. This guy is one crazy, crazy motherfucker. Oh my god, man. Okay, so I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime, and I wanted to, okay? Okay. I had heard some really decent things about Spree. Basically, it's about this guy named Kerr, played by Joe Carey, and he is somebody who is very lonely in his life. A lot of rough things have happened in his with his parents and breaking up and things, and he sort of looks to social media as sort of the acceptance that he, he wants to have. And unfortunately, like, no one's really watching, no one's really caring, but he's still trying to be the social media guy. And he wants to sort of blow up big, he wants to be this, this, you know, influencer, this, this social media sensation. And so he decides that he's going to do something very clever and interesting to get the people to follow him. He's going to kill people. He's just a regular driver. Spree is sort of like this, this app that you would use for like you know to to have somebody drive you to a location or something and he works there and he's gonna kill these people uh you know poison water or basically stab them to death or be beat them or behead them or or uh, have them get attacked by dogs you you name it this guy is this guy is off his rocker man but i love this movie man i really did and i wasn't prepared to like because i was like okay yeah, this guy's nuts in, like, you know, this car and, you know, ooh, wow, okay, what's what's really inventive about that? But I think the social media aspect is, and I think the the idea that he sort of takes it too far to try to be an influencer, to try to be somebody, and it's just one step too far in the insanity that he just loses along the way. Man... This movie's nuts, man. It really is. And I had a totally fun time with this movie. I really did. I had a ball with this flick. I think that Joe Keery does an amazing job. I mean, he does a good job in Stranger Things, but this is, like, the lead role. He's, he's, at times he's sympathetic. At other times he's, he's completely psychotic. And other times you're, you're just, like, you're just like, dude, get help, man. Get like, like this is a simple solution. Just get, get, get help. Just unplug from the world, man. He just won't do it. It's, it's, it's really a great movie, man. It's got some really fun moments. The horror is really cool, man. I mean, this, this dude, seriously, just going on the journey with this guy as he slowly just starts to kill people, and just wreaks havoc on these people's lives and slowly is just trying to gain more acceptance from people and even when he's doing it like the people on social media are like dude you're you, you're a nut job you're a nut job you're you're stupid you're gonna, gonna get caught but you know it's just the fame and the fortune and the more followers he gets the more he's into it and just i loved it man i loved it like this is a great horror flick for this day and age it really is. Like, you would have thought this movie, like, 20, 30 years ago was probably something like science fiction. But actually, no, it's quite real. This shit does happen in real life. There are crazy fucking drivers out there that, you know, be careful of who you get in a car with. Because you might not survive the night, man. And with this motherfucker, you probably definitely will not survive the night. Very well done. I love how they made the movie from the different camera angles and how he's shooting it and it felt almost like it felt almost like a found footage thing or something it 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 was really unique and really interesting the performances are great the kills are pretty cool and i love the sort of social commentary about the world at the same time 
I was not expecting to like this movie by far. I was really expecting to hate it, but honestly, this movie really surprised me, man. I really loved it. So count me in as somebody who was definitely surprised by this, but in a very pleasant way, man. Really love love that one. Totally surprised by that, really. Other than that, that does it. I mean, they have some of the indie stuff over here, some of the indie stuff over there, but unfortunately, uh, none of the major new release this week. Uh, talk about odd, man, but, uh, well, I guess that's this Walmart for you. I mean, sometimes it really baffles me. I can never f- figure this place out. I don't know. All right, well, that being said, not bad. Let's head out. I can never figure out this Walmart, guys. Seriously, I can never figure out this Walmart because for a couple weeks we see all of the new releases and all of the major indie titles and it seems like they're turning a corner. And then we get this week where they literally have none of the new releases whatsoever and then they have all of the friggin' indie stuff. What? Like, ugh literally baffles me every single time if i if i fully could be able to understand this walmart i might be able to figure out the secrets of the world but uh, that may never happen guys but actually what really baffled me this week and actually kind of shocked me is that they've actually completely changed the whole movie section around if you notice like now all the the specialty seasonal stuff is over here then they have a, so some more movies and some more movies and some more movies. And then they have the indie tie titles over here. And then they ended up moving the new release section over here. All of these titles and everything, they moved all of that o- o- over here onto the side area. And then what they ended up doing is they actually ended up moving all of the TVs over here. So actually what they've done now is they've honestly now lessened the physical media at this store because usually what was here was that it was like wall to wall to wall to wall movies. Like the whole wall was movies constantly. It was completely and utterly movies, man. All over the place was movies galore, man. And now that has changed. And I think they changed because of honestly the um, the whole... Uh, uh, fall season, the holiday stuff coming up, Black Friday, they changed it all up. And on top of that, I think again, just like we saw over at Target, I think the big thing about it is that now physical media, unfortunately, is not really selling the way that they want now. So physical media has kind of went down and they're now putting all these sort of more like cheapo T- T- TVs here to try to get people to buy them. Which is kind of unfortunate because I was hoping that with this Walmart we're, we're starting to get a really great push with physical media again. But now seeing this, not so much, guys. Again, it's cool to see all the indie releases and everything. I'm hoping maybe they have the new releases in the back. They just haven't put it out yet. But, uh, yeah, man. So all of this section now over here is completely now... T- TVs. We're probably never getting physical media over here ever again, man. So we just got one, two, three, four, five sections, and we've got the new release section over here, and then of course the 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 other like five dollar dumping and everything on the other side. So all of this other section is completely gone. <sighs> Another place that is lessening the physical media. You know, there is a pandemic in this world, but there's also two pandemics, coronavirus and also losing physical media. Maybe they're thinking maybe they can offset the cost of having so much physical media that's not going to sell. Who knows, man? But all I know is that more physical media is at a loss, guys. <sighs> it really frustrates me, but there's not much I can do or do about it, but just to continue to support physical media but i wanted to show you guys like last week this was all here and now that's all changed so within one week in the blink of an eye everything can change Uh, all right well i'm gonna still support stuff regardless anyways not bad here all the wonderful indie goodness to check out at least all right well not bad just wish we would have seen some of the other new features but Eh, it is what it is. 
let's head next location and see what we can find. All right, everybody, we are at our second location, Target. Now, before we go in, you know I like to look for little news items and stuff to talk to you guys about. Well, this one was very interesting because it's it's Disney yet again. Are you are you shocked? <laughs> I have a feeling you're not and neither am I. So, the headline reads Disney stakeholder pushing for blockbusters like Black Widow to be released on Disney Plus. Okay. Let's see what this says. So, Disney recently announced a shift in focus to streaming, a sensible business decision when people are not attending movie theaters or theme parks. Throw in how many people are out of work right now and the fact that they're probably not buying merchandise in stores or online and trying to make as much money as possible from Disney Plus makes perfect sense. Despite that, it seems like the company remains committed to the theatrical experience for now. While Soul is debuting on Disney Plus on Christmas Day, Black Widow has been pushed to May of 2021. However, in an interview with Variety, Walt Disney Company investor Dan Loeb made it clear that he's urging them to bypass theatrical debuts and focus on Disney+. Plus. This guy says, I don't think they appreciate the tiger they have by the tail, which is to say the value they can drive by moving into a subscription model which has been adopted by everyone from Microsoft to Amazon. What Netflix has is this immense subscriber base that allows it to invest in an enormous amount of content and, and amortize that to get more subscribers. Disney isn't there yet, but they need to get there as quickly as possible. And it goes on to say, basically, if investors like this one continue pushing Disney, chances are they'll listen, and it really does feel like they're trying to hold on to something, movies and theaters, which is no longer viable or what the majority want. The performance of 10 improved that people don't feel safe taking part in the big screen experience and with no COVID vaccine in place, that's unlikely to change for a while. <sighs> okay. Look, I have told you guys time and time again that I do not like the fact that we are slowly trying to get rid of the big screen experience. I don't think everybody is trying to, but I think with this pandemic, it's become very clear that a lot of companies are seeing cracks in the system and are trying to exploit it, like Disney. However, it seems like Disney is kind of like on the edge right now. Like part of them has some things coming to Disney Plus, but they kind of want to hold back a lot of stuff for theatrical, at least for the time being. However, that being said, you do have investors who, like this one guy, who are pushing them to release it on Disney+. Plus. Now, we can argue what's right, what's wrong, but these are the money people. These are the guys that, that are investing into the Disney company millions and millions of dollars. Who are they going, going to listen to? I mean, if you really think about it, I, I mean, honestly... Who are they going to listen to? Are they going to listen to you? Are they going to listen to me? Like, I I'm sure they're in a board meeting right now, and they're saying, geez, I wonder what Film Fan 108 thinks about, uh, about us moving Black Widow to Disney+. Plus." No, they, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about me. They don't give a fuck about you. That's the truth. Okay, in all honesty, it's the truth. You have to follow the money. I've said it time and time again, no matter what it is, you have to follow the money. These investors are what is our... What is driving the, the market right now? They, they will go to the Disney company. There, there can be a, an investor that goes to the Disney company and says, oh, well, I really wanted Black Widow to come on Disney+. Plus. Well, you know, we, we just feel like if we push it back to May, things might get better, and, you know, we'll, we'll make the money. Okay, well, you could make the money now. Well, I know, but you know, I, we, we still are, well, okay. Then I'm taking my millions and millions of dollars and I'm leaving your company. You know, goodbye. Unless you do what I want, then I'll keep the money in. This is what you have to realize. It's no longer about, 
it's no longer about you and I and our reactions. It's about the money people, the investors, and what they care about. And if they care enough about it and they push enough, that's what they'll get. And this is why this is why streaming has prevailed as much as it has. This is why the theatrical movie experience is going away. Because they see COVID-19 and they say, look, we looked at Tenant. Tenant did not perform. So now you're hoping on a business model that is now, at least as far as they're concerned, is dying. Where they see Disney Plus as a streaming service that's rising. And so now it's it's this push and pull between executives and investors and fans and 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 the movie theater owners and who's going to come out on top. There's no real telling. But if if these investors really want to push for the change and really wants to get movie theaters out of the equation, trust me, if they want it, it will happen. Whether or not I care about it, whether or not you care about it, it's all about the money trail, guys. That's what it's about. And unfortunately, movie theaters right now are not in a position to negotiate the way maybe they would have pre-COVID. So keep that in mind, guys. But I just thought it was very interesting seeing one seeing one investor say that. And yes, he's outspoken. But think about how many investors who are not this guy who have not spoken out, believe the same thing that he does. That's really interesting. Yeah, one person can speak out for it, but there's a lot of people that are the silent majority that don't speak out. And those people are also the ones to watch out for because they, behind the scenes, are working their magic. And before you know it, the theatrical experience may be dead for good. I just wanted to bring it to your attention, guys, because, look, um, as much as... We think we can influence stuff. And trust me, I still think we can influence stuff. I truly do. But unless you got like millions and millions of dollars in your pocket, then it's gonna be a little bit hard to create the change you want. Just just being real with, with you guys. Definitely let me know what you think about that. As far as Target is concerned, well... It is a good size release week. There is a few interesting things, big titles coming out. Unfortunately, Walmart, you know, forgot to put out some titles. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully uh, Target won't do it, but, uh, you know, uh, hey, it happens. Uh, all right, well, let's hope we see some of the stuff that we didn't see over at the first Walmart. Let's hope, but uh, the only way we're going to find out is head inside, so let's check it out. All right, everybody, we are in at Target, and look... Some actually really nice media to check out this time around. <laughs> Pretty plentiful. Kind of shocked, but a really nice pleasant surprise from Target this time around. Very cool. And speaking of cool, come on, man. The 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Digital of Back to the Future Trilogy, baby, for $42.99. The Blu-ray Digital for $29.99. And they also have this other release for $42.99. Blu-ray Digital, I think it's this one up here. And that... Oh, it's a limited edition gift set that includes... What is that? A levitating hoverboard replica. Oh, that's really nice. Look at that. For all you Back to the Future Part 2 fans, that's really cool, man. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's a great exclusive, man. That's really cool, dude. Sort of put that on your, your mantelpiece. A cool Back to the Future hoverboard. That's nice, man. Oh, so awesome. Not bad. I mean, it's only the Blu-ray Digital, obviously, but, I mean, still, a limited edition gift set. Not half bad, man. Nice. Oh, bad on that one, man. And speaking of the Back to the Future trilogy, the 35th anniversary. My God, man, 35 years? Damn, I'm old. <laughs> Shit. Oh, my God, man. I, okay. You know, when I talk about really great trilogies... Back to the Future is always in the conversation. I mean, really, it honestly is. And I know some people are a little lukewarm on Part 2, and especially Part 3. 
and it's not a perfect trilogy by any means, but I've always really loved this series of movies. I really honestly have. From the story to the characters, I mean, Marty McFly is amazing. He is classic. Michael J. Fox, man, he will always be known as Marty McFly. He does an amazing job with this character. I mean, Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown is one of the most classic, wacky, quirky scientists you've ever seen in your life. And Christopher Lloyd just gives it his all in this role. He does an amazing job here, man. He really honestly does. It's amazing what what him and Michael J. Fox were to pull off. The chemistry that they have together, the friendship of, of the characters, the crazy hijinks. But yet it's all very grounded at the same time and it all makes sense at the end end of the day. You're not like confused or it's too complicated. The plot makes perfect sense here. Even Even a great character like Biff, man. Biff is, man... I got to admit, Biff is probably one of the best movie villains of all time, hands down. I mean, he is a complete and utter butthead. He's he's a little clueless at times, but man, is is he just a fun villain, man, to sort of like revel in all the the craziness that 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 character deals with, man. I'm telling you, it's, man, so good, dude. And all the actors here: Crispin Glover, Leah Thompson, everybody who was a part of this thing. This is such a really special movie experience, all three of these films, man, because they're all really good in their own unique way. I mean, the first Back to the Future film is absolutely classic. It's up there with some of the most classic films of all time. People are nostalgic about it. Hell, I'm nostalgic about the film. I love it. It's a really great, simplistic time travel tale. Just in a really great way of, what if you were to see your parents young again? What would that be like? And tr having to try to get them together, like it's just it's it's re just real pure fun, man. And Back to the Future Part Two, yes, it's a little more complicated with more wacky time travel, but I love the crazy, weird hijinks of the characters and their different ages. You know, Biff really playing this this really sinister villain at times, and I love sort of the journey that Marty McFly takes in it. I think it's. I think it's better than I think a lot of people give it credit for. It's not as good as Back to the Future, to be clear, but I think it's still really well done, man. And Back to the Future Part 3, I think if I were to I think if I were to nail it down, I think a lot of people probably think that this movie is probably the lesser of all the three films. But I think it's very well done. I love the sort of Western idea that's put into the time travel. I think it's kind of really cool. I love sort of the Western stereotypes and playing on that and the comedy of it. I thought it was really fun and unique. At the time, I think a lot of people were very lukewarm on that movie or not really feeling it. But I think over the years, it's gained more appreciation. And it was just a really great series of movies that are just really feel-good films. Like, at the end of this trilogy, you feel good about going on this adventure with these characters and the journey that you've been on. It's just a fun time. All three of these movies are incredibly fun with incredibly engaging and likable char characters that you can relate to and you want to see what happens to them. The acting, the special effects, the story, everything is done so well. Steven Spielberg, Robert Zemeckis, they're geniuses. And this movie proves that you can have a fun, timeless classic and still really have a movie that can relate to young people, that can relate to older people. It's a movie that relates to anybody. And it's such a great film. It's such a great series. And my God, man. 35 years here's to another 35 years for back to the future because these are movies that i grew up with back in the vhs days the early 90s the late 80s these were my jam i love this i related to these characters i love them going on this journey the delorean is absolutely classic this series easily earns my respect in a big bad way and it's one of the best trilogies out there I don't know whether you guys agree, 
but I'll fight you on it for for sure, man. I I I love it so much, man. These are such really great films, man. I, I love it so much, man. So good. If you guys have never watched any of the Back to the Future series, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're you're clearly missing out, man, but whether you're watching on 4K or Blu-ray or DVD, it doesn't matter. Watch this because this is essential viewing for any movie lover by far, man. So, why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Then I'm seeing they have the DVD of Tremors, Shrieker Island for $14.99. Look at this bad boy, man. And look at that art. That is really, really great art, man. I'm telling you. Is it just me or like every single Tremors film always has really great cover art to it? Whether the movies are good or bad, it kind of doesn't really matter because the artwork always kind of pulls you in. It's really great, man. Like, they're right there, and in the background, the, tre the tre tremor is right there, ready, ready to eat those fuckers. Like, <laughs> so great. That is great artwork, man. God, it always sort of catches the eye, too. Huh. Man. Tremors are so awesome, man. I wish I could say the same about the movie. Yeah, I hate to admit it, guys. I'm going to be real with you. I, I, I watched this on Amazon Prime, and this movie was really disappointing. It, I watched all of the Tremors movies, to be fair. And the reason why I've watched the Tremors movies, all of them, is because of my Michael Gross. He sort of has remained the constant throughout this whole series. His character of Burt Gummer is really great. And so... I've always sort of stuck by the series, good or bad, because I wanted to watch him and his character. Now, to be fair, the last couple movies, like the, the first one that introduced Jamie Kennedy, I wasn't a huge fan of. It was okay. It, it had some decent moments. But the last one they did was actually not bad. I kind of actually enjoyed that. So going into this one, I was a little bit like, okay, the last one wasn't bad. I'm going to give it a chance. And again, I was just really disappointed, man. I really honestly was. It's, it's basically about, about Burt Gummer really going out of retirement yet again to fight the Tremors. A actually, speaking of which, what, what am I saying? Isn't every film now he sort of comes out of retirement to battle the Tremors and, and the Graboids? Like, is, is, it, is it just me? It's like every single time it's like, oh, I'm coming out of retirement now. It's like, okay... How many times can somebody come out of retirement? I was I'm, I was kind of waiting in the movie for for him to say a line of like, wait, wait a minute, I'm getting too old for this shit. Like, like I was waiting for the Danny Glover line because I'm like, okay, you've done it how many times now? But he he goes to this island where I guess there's like genetically modified graboids and he's got to take care of them before they like eat the population on the island or, or something like that. It's you know. It's it's the same old stuff, you know. He's got to he's got to take out the grab boy population and sort of be a badass while doing it. To be fair here, Michael Michael Gross is still good. He's still awesome as Burt Gummer. He's great. I mean, he still is the classic Burt Gummer that you know and love that hasn't changed one single bit. But everything else around him really is not that great. I mean, the rest of the characters here are really bland and lifeless. They have really no great traits or really memorable lines. They're just... They're there, babe. They're there basically to, to be graboid meat, is what they are. The, to, to, to be food for the graboids. I mean, that's all they really are, man. I mean... You do have John Heater here that kind of plays the sidekick to... Bert, but the problem with John Heater in this film, to be fair, is that he's he's just so bland and he has no real defining qualities other than he's hung over a lot. He whines and he's a pussy. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much what you get out out of John Heater. And I'm like, okay, I would have rather had Jamie Kennedy here. I mean, and Jamie K Kennedy, they kind of reference the character a little bit, but he's he's not around, and I would have rather had that. It would have been a cool, like, father-son dynamic again instead of this guy, which really makes no impression at all. They probably got John he Heater because they were like, oh, hey, by the way, you know, 
you're not making Napoleon Dynamite 2, so why not come over and make Trumper Shrieker Island? Like, that's pretty much how they got the fucker. But the characters are not really memorable. The action, unfortunately, is not really there either. There's a couple of cool, interesting moments with sort of, like, guns blazing and go going off and shredding some graboids, and some of it is cool, but... It's really sort of on the cheap and really... I mean, hell, you don't even get to see the Graboids all that much. Like, the Ass Blasters or, or, or the classic Graboids themselves or the two la lagged ones, you don't really get to see much of them. So the action is very sh sort of short-changed. It's not really fun or exciting. There's other previous Tremors movies that are way more exciting than this. And even if you're a fan of blood and gore, and the previous Tremors films had some really decent blood, up blood and gore, and you're thinking, okay, maybe the one thing that's going to save this is the blood and gore. And I hate to admit to you guys, but the blood and gore is really not that good. I mean, there's this is like straight up the most lackluster PG-13 Tremors film I've ever seen. Like, you get maybe a tiny splotch of blood here, and that's it. Like, you barely get to see anything. Which is a real shame because the Graboids are like really brutal, man. So you would think you would see a lot of blood and gore, but you, you don't see anything. Like they go out of their way to not show show you much. It's all just really disappointing, unfortunately, man. It, it really is. Because look, not all the Tremors movies are created e equal, to be fair. Some are really great, some are really shitty. But there's always some sort of redeeming quality. Even the comedy at times is really good, and, and some even the lesser known ones are. But this one just fell flat on every level. The action, the characters, the blood and gore, the the, the comedy. Yeah, you get some really great one-liners with Michael Gross, but again, he just can't save this movie, man. It's just a really lackluster affair. That I was, I just left the movie really pissed off for a lot of reasons. I mean, one that they really go out of their way to even screw the mythology up. Because there's moments in this movie where they're literally walking around the island, they're, they're, they're talking a lot, they're yelling, they're, they're stomping their feet, and I'm like, why aren't the Graboids coming after them? Why aren't they swallowing them up and eating them? And there's just no explanation for anything. There's nothing. And so it really honestly ticked me off, really did. And there's nothing really new or inventive with the Graboids themselves. Usually in these films, there's usually something that is sort of new and interesting to the Graboid legacy. But not this time around, man. They, they have maybe like Predator Vision. Okay. And maybe they kind of shriek a little bit that makes you kind of convulse because it's really powerful. But, eh? <laughs> like, it's, it's nothing really great or inventive or interesting. And this movie is a real big letdown, man. It really honestly is. It's, I, I, to be fair with you, I think they, I wish they would have sort of, sort of ended at the last one. Because if they did, yeah, it wasn't the greatest, but I think it was a, it could have been a really cool send-off. Tremor Shrieker Island just feels like one too many to me. It really does. And it's a huge letdown. Huge, huge letdown, guys. I mean, how can you screw up a Tremors movie with Michael Groves? But honestly, Tremor Shrieker Island actually managed to pull it off. Then I'm seeing over here they have, oh, well, speaking of a really great movie saga, forget Back to the Future, Twilight, baby. Okay, you guys know I'm kidding, right? <laughs> you guys know I'm kidding. I would never heap that kind of praise ever, ever on Twilight, man. Never would I. But apparently Target does because there's an only at Target exclusive steelbook for Twilight the Complete Saga for $34.99. A while back, I, I showed you, like, Walmart had, like, a lot of, like, cool special editions that came out for for the Twilight series. And I'm like, what? Twilight? Have they all had amnesia? Like, or have they seen the same movies that I have? Because these movies are not very good, and they're really, like... Like, basically, fantasy soap opera is basically what it is, man. Actually, not a bad cover, if I'm being being honest, though. I, I like the cover with the characters and the wolf and and the vampires. Actually, it's kind of kind of nice, to be honest with you. I mean, I really don't want to heap that kind of praise on Twilight, but, I mean... 
I mean, I mean, I gotta be honest with you guys, but I mean, jeez, God, God, this series is is really bad, man. God, it's bad. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll kind of be honest, at least a little bit, saying there is a couple of the movies that I kind of enjoy. Like the the first half of Twilight isn't outright terrible. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess it's passable, and and Eclipse is okay, but the rest of it, man, it just really is painfully bad man and it basically these movies are like for tween girls They're for tween girls so they can like drool over taylor lautner but why the fuck are you even drooling over taylor lautner man just uh, the the cheesy romance and the the bad vampire mythology i mean these mother these motherfuckers sparkle they sparkle come on man vampire sparkling that's oh god that god that's yeah that guy, that's some bullshit. Oh, man. Don't get me started on a rant, because I'm, I'm going to get started, guys. But honestly, this series is not for me. I don't think it's really for a lot of you guys out there. But for tween girls, man, they ate this shit up. They ate it up, man. I mean, I still don't get it to, to this day. It baffles the little, literal shit out of me. But you know what? There's a lot of movies out there that baffle me how it ever became as popular as it is. And I guess Twilight's one of them. I mean, Kristen Stewart's better than this. Robert Pattinson, well, Taylor Lautner, not so much. But but still, I mean, it's it's a series that, sort of, God, guys, if you ever get a chance to watch it, have a barf bag in front of you because you might need it, man. God, so bad. But for all you Twilight lovers out there, all three of you, hey, new steelbook. And then we're seeing the DVD of The Secrets We Keep for sixteen ninety nine. This is definitely a new one for the week for sure, man. Look at that. Huh. A Quiet Neighborhood. A Deadly Past. Ooh, with Numi Rapaz, Joel Kinnaman, and Chris Messina. Not a bad cast at all. <laughs> it looks like somebody's getting tortured. Look at that. Huh, what is this about? In post-World War II America, a woman rebuilding her life in the suburbs with her husband kidnaps her neighbor and seeks vengeance for the heinous war crime she believes he committed against her. Ooh, interesting. So, she's sort of kidnapping and torturing a possible war criminal. Huh, all right. Now, this is intriguing. I do kind of like this, man. That's not bad. There's a lot of movies like this, man. There, there was one with Oscar Isaac that I really liked called um, Operation Finale. That was a really good one. And there's even, like, a horror comedy with, with Dan Aykroyd and Jack Lemmon called Getting Away with Murder. It's it's about him finding out that Jack Lemon is is a Nazi war criminal and he's trying to like find him and and maybe kind of put him on trial a little bit and kill him and the hilarity of that so I mean there is these type of movies that are very serious and there's other ones that are not so much but this looks kind of intriguing. This looks really interesting, man. And I really like Numi Rapace. She's definitely very underrated as far as I'm concerned. That doesn't look half bad, man. Huh. The secrets we keep. Looks pretty cool. Not bad at all, man. Then I'm also seeing the DVD of The Owners for $9.99. Oh. Home Invasion Goodness. Oh, baby. <laughs> Now look, there are there are as I've said before a lot of home invasion films, man. By far, there's a shit ton of them. I, uh, you know, The Strangers and even the first Purge movie and many, 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 many others, man. But there's not a lot of them where sort of the tables in a lot of ways kind of turn in a very unique way because a lot of home invasion films are very uh, formulaic. But there is certain ones within the genre that do take some wild twists and turns, like Last House on the Left, of course, Funny Games, uh, Your Next is one that, that I, I, I always think of. Of course, I think a lot of people would agree that definitely one that I remember the most being very twist and turny was Don't Breathe. 
Don't Breathe was very wild and weird, man. Went into some really crazy places. I mean, let's be real, guys. I'm never going to look at a, tur uh, a turkey baser the same ever again. And I'm pretty sure most of you who've seen the movie definitely will not see the same either. I think it depends on the twists and turns and how the movie is. I mean, look, I like a good twist and a plot. I like a good you know, thing coming out of left field that you're not expecting. But again, it's all based on if the movie is worth it. Like again, something like Your Next was a really great, crazy, wild horror comedy experience. But again, it worked because you liked the characters. And then Funny Games was very hardcore. But, but you know, the characters were very unique and interesting. The same with Last House on, on, on the Left, something that you had never seen before. It was crazy, wild lie like that even don't breathe here unfortunately i don't feel sympathy for anybody so it's hard to really engage with the movie the way i wanted to there's some really great there's some really great home invasion movies that i can definitely get into and then there's something like the owners where you can have all the twists and turns you want but if you're not engaged in the movie then it really doesn't matter i'm curious to know what you guys think about that definitely let, let me know about that one man then I'm seeing over here they have the Blu-ray DVD of Cutthroat City. Another new one this week. Look at that. Look at that cast, man. Wesley Snipes, Terrence Howard, Ethan Hawke. Very nice. And an Urban City movie. You gotta have Ethan Hawke in it, man. I, I remember the old days of, like, training day, and I'm like, Ethan Hawke, man. You need him in your, like, you know, inner city ghetto film right just makes sense to have the the white actor in there okay and why might as well we'll be ethan hawk i mean he does have cred from uh, from from training day so that kind of does make sense guys a film by rizza huh interesting what is this one about when director rizza comes the explosive cutthroat city the story of four boyhood friends from new orleans oh, will turn after hurricane katrina to decimated homes, no jobs and no help from FEMA. Out of options, they're looking to turn to local gangster. They remember pulling up a heist in the heart of the city. When the job goes bad, the friends find themselves on the run. Oh, it, ooh. It's like they stole the heist money and they're, they're on the run. Okay, very interesting. Actually, it kind of looks cool. Honestly, it's one I was not expecting to just see this week. Nice. I'm assuming Ethan Hawke plays the detective because that's the only sort of thing that makes sense to me unless he's playing, like, the gangster, which would be really weird. <laughs> but I'm assuming he does. But, man, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, for the real-life events like Hurricane Katrina and everything. Interesting. Hmm. I know that with Hurricane Katrina and a lot of the things that happened in that area that, you know, people got poor and they had no homes and people had to find ways to survive. And so it's kind of kind of hard hitting, but yet realistic also kind of interesting. And speaking of Riza, I know he's directed um, The Man with the Iron Fist, which is not a bad m movie. It's actually pretty decent. I'm not a huge fan of sort of rappers turning into sort of actors or hollywood directors i don't know i'm always like kind of stick to what you know type of person but i mean if you can pull it off and it's well done like look i i mean ice cube's done pretty good and there's some other other actors like snoop dogg isn't terrible at times so i mean i guess you can if you have the right material cutthroat city doesn't look half bad huh an interesting inner city crime drama hmm doesn't look half bad. If you guys know much about Cutthroat City, definitely let me know. And then I'm seeing they have the DVD digital of The Vanished for $12.99. Now, this is another new one this week. And I got a chance to catch this on Amazon Prime. I wanted to because the actors involved with this thing, Thomas Jane, Anne Hayes, Jason Patrick. And I hadn't seen Jason Patrick in something in a really long time, man. And it's directed by Peter Fascinelli, which is unique and interesting because, of course, if you guys know, I know I got to go back to Twilight, but he was in Twilight and a few other really 
really well-known titles, but he's not really a director that much. He's done some things for, like, College Humor, but really not much of a director. So the fact that he directed it was actually really interesting. It's basically about this this family whose daughter goes missing. The sheriff, it's kind of hard to find any leads or anything going on. And basically, in a nutshell, the, the parents have to take matters into their own hands and try to search for what's going on and all the complications that that kind of goes with. I got to admit, the movie is pretty well done. It is a little bit of a slow burn, I will admit. It takes a while to get going. But once it does, it's a really great psychological thriller. The acting is pretty decent as well. I mean, Anne Hayes does an okay job, but Thomas Jane does a really fantastic job. And so does Jason Patrick, man, as the sheriff. Really, really great, well, well done drama. Really great acting here. And I got to admit that the ending threw me for a goddamn loop. I was not expecting where it was going to go. I really was not. Usually sometimes I'm pretty good at kind of guessing where things would go. And I maybe have guessed it a little bit. But to be honest with you, I did not expect everything, especially where this went t towards the end. And it, it's pretty good, man. It's got some Hitchcockian vibes in there as well. Honestly, I was pleasantly surprised by this one. I wasn't really expecting it. And the directing from Peter Fascinelli is pretty decent overall. Actually, kind of very unique and very interesting. And if you're up for a good psychological thriller, The Vanished, not half bad, man. Hmm. Very, very interesting. And then the other thing I'm seeing is they have the DVD of Season 1 of The Great for $22.99. Now, I've heard of this show. I remember seeing clips and trailers for it, but I never actually got to actually see the actual show itself. And occasionally, true story. I like that. Very nice. Very nice indeed. If the crown fits, take it. Now, I mean, I know it takes... It takes in the the time of like yeah the rise of Catherine the the great and everything played by Elf Elf Fan Fanning and Nicholas Holt. I've heard it's actually not bad. There's some really good comedy. There's some good drama in here as well. It's a time period that I'm not extremely familiar with, but when I was looking at clips for the show, it kind of reminded me of The Favorite. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit quirky. Very, very unique and interesting characters, sort of the the betrayals and the drama that goes into that stuff. It's actually not bad, man. From what from what I looked up, actually, it looks pretty decent. Hmm. Doesn't look too bad though. Don't know too much about it. Again, it's a time period that I'm not hugely engaged with. But again, if it's kind of like the favorite, which I did enjoy, might be worth it, honestly. Hmm. If you guys know much about it, definitely let me know. The great, two really great actors as well, so might be worth diving into. Oh, definitely let me know uh, about that one, guys. And other than that, some really great stuff this week. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, God, do we have to include Twilight? Ah, I guess seven and eight. A lot of really stuff this time around over at. Target. Shocking, but uh, great surprise indeed, man. Loved it. All right. Let's head out. Well, well, well. Surprise, surprise. What if I told you guys early at the beginning of the video that actually this Target was going to be better than the first Walmart and actually show off a heck of a lot more of the major new releases than even that store had? you probably would have called me crazy. Well, I guess I'm crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, tr truth be told, the first Walmart had a lot of really great indie t titles to show off, so that they did have. But as far as the major new releases, well, I guess Target wins this week. Nutty, to say the least, but uh, tis r the truth. And speaking of which, a lot of really great great sort of 4K upgrades and new releases and indie titles. 
it's nice to see a lot of physical media love this time at Target. And let's be real, Target sometimes doesn't always have the best physical media track record. But this week, I think they definitely proved their worth. Not half bad, guys. And, and actually, I kind of passed it by. But they do have the Tremors... 7 movie collection for $29.99 on DVD. I don't know why it's not all the way up front where the other Tremors movie is. You'd think that they would promote it by putting it up front. But, uh, yeah, this one, Tremors 7 movie collection, has all of the Tremors movies, including the new one. Not half bad for all you Tremors fans out there. If you're looking for one that has all the, all the, all the movies, Target definitely has it, but you might have to search a little bit, because clearly when it should be up front, it's back here. <sighs> Some of the decisions don't make a single lick of sense to me, but, um, you know, <sighs> I'll never understand it. What the hell, man? I'll, I never do. At least I had the media out this time, which is much better than some of the other places I can say, which ain't half bad. So, not bad selection this time around. Very happy indeed. I hope you are. Let's head out of here and check out more media. All right, everybody. We are at our third location, the second Walmart. We're going to go in and see if there's any indie titles that we have not checked out yet at either of the two locations. I'm not sure. I think we saw all of them, but uh, we'll go in and check it out regardless. But before we do, I got a movie trailer to talk with you guys about. And it's a trailer that came out recently, and that is Monster Hunter. God help us all. Man. Um, look, before I talk about Monster Hunter, I kind of got to put it in context a little bit. So, this movie is directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Now, look, I've said multiple times that I don't outright hate Paul W.S. Anderson. I like some of his work. Truly, I do. You know, First Mortal Kombat is not terrible. It's pretty decent. Event Horizon, great. Love it. Soldier, vastly un underrated, man. Uh, re really enjoy that flick. Even the first Resident Evil is not terrible. Actually, I kind of like it. But everything after that is just really shitty. The other Resident Evil movies that he directed is is pure trash. That Three Musketeers movie is god-awful. Plus all the other stuff, man. I, I just... Oh, man. Yeah. He's... Paul W. Sanderson has now, you know, his films have become known as trash. He's been become known as a trash filmmaker. And it's kind of a shame because he was once a really cool filmmaker and that went down the toilet in a big bad way, man. Yeah, I can't... Anybody who wants me to defend later Paul W. Sanderson, I just can't do it, man. I can't. Like, earlier Paul W. Sanderson, I will defend Later, Paul W. Sanderson, I can't do it, man. Cannot, won't, won't even try. And then there's Mila Jovovich. Now, look, Mila, in some ways, is still a solid actress, but, you know, when you look at movies like The Fifth Element and a lot of other movies that she did early on in her career, those really felt like great movies. She was really becoming, in some ways, kind of somebody to look out for as a really great action female. Even that first Resident Evil, great. But the the choices that she's made since, movies like The Fourth Kind, which is really crappy, uh, you have the other Resident Evil movies that she was in. And look, I'm, I'm happy to see her that she stayed on board with the Resident Evil movies. Like, not many people can actually say that they stay on board franchises for that long. But I kind of think it hurt her career. And I think working with her husband because her and Paul W. Sanderson are married, I don't think working with him as much as she has has really helped her career either. She hasn't went out and diversified as much as she wanted to or could possibly still do. No, she still works with her husband because that's been a winning combination. Oh, man. Um, so now we go to Monster Hunter. Now, look, does the movie look bad from the trailer? No. Does it look great? No, it, it's, it's kind of somewhere in between, because basically from what I gather from the trailers, basically it's about these soldiers that get 
sort of hurled into this other dimension or this alternate reality or whatever you want to call it. And they've now got to fight these monsters and survive and try to get back home. That's basically the gist of it. Now, look, I've never played any of the Monster Hunter video games. I literally, and you guys might be shocked by this, I know nothing about the Monster Hunter video games. They say it's a popular franchise. Fuck if I know anything about it. I, I know shit all, man. So if it's popular, I must have gotten off the video game boat when they became popular because I know zip all about that, man. It doesn't look bad, though. It looks like there could be some cool action here. Some of the CGI looks a little weak. Some of the monster designs, oh, I don't know. It's 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 really kind of. I let's put it this way, man. I don't have a lot of faith in this movie. I really don't because Paul W. Sanderson, he's become the he's become the video game guy, right? Oh, you know, Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil and now this movie. But the problem is, is that, unfortunately, he doesn't do good movies. He doesn't make great cinematic action movies. And that's the problem. Because, you know, he has all these influences. Oh, I'm influenced by Ridley Scott and Francis Ford Coppola and... And, you know, Steven Spielberg and all these PA people. Okay, fine. You're you're influenced by them. But you cannot... You're, you're not those guys. You're not good at what you do. And he just... He just keeps on failing and failing and failing. And... And he's no longer the filmmaker that I thought he was going to be. Like, he's just, like, the video game action guy now. Like, you know, back when he did Event Horizon and he did Soldier and and that great indie movie Shopping with Jude Law. Like, like to me, it felt like, okay, man, he... It seems like he's doing some very unique and interesting sci-fi cinema. But then he just went down the rabbit hole of generic action video game drack. And... And now this is just seems like the same stuff. I mean, it's kind of elevated by Tony Ja being here. I don't know how much elevated it can be. With I mean, Tony Ja is great, but how much can he elevate the material? You know, you have other good people in here like Megan Good, and then you have rappers like T.I. in here. Like, ah. Uh... Look, I, I want to give this movie a chance, and I'm going to give it a chance, but boy, Monster Hunter seems like monster crap to me. It really does, man. Just another... Just typical video game based action movie from to Paul W. S. Anderson that I could give a two shits about. Like I, I hope I hope I'm totally wrong. Fair I really hope I am. But until I'm proven wrong, that's what my thought on that is. I don't know. I mean you guys let me know what you think, but it it I have barely any hopes for this one, man. I really don't. Let me know what you think, but, uh, oh, another Paul W. Anderson movie. It's supposed to come out in December, but with the coronavirus, I kind of doubt it. And look, 2020 is really bad as it is anyways. Do we really need a Paul W. Anderson movie on top of it? No, we really don't. Move that shit to 2021, please. Move it. There I go. Let me know what you guys think of that. In the meantime, well, let's see what the second Walmart has in store for us this week so we are in at the second walmart guys now it's actually kind of weird because there's not really much to show off at this second walmart really truthfully there's not i mean they didn't get a lot of stuff in this week they didn't get anything in in the front location i mean no back to the future none of the new releases nothing at all even on the side, there's not really much to show off either, man. I mean, it kind of really sucks. There's only a few things that are actually worth showing off here. And uh, the first thing actually is NOS 4A2 Season 2, the DVD for 1996. They do have this, which I did not see at the first Walmart, so at least that's uh, something to, to check out. Now... A different kind of vampire story returns. I 
when I showed this off the last time, the first season, I really didn't know anything about it. And since then, I've actually kind of been trying to do some research on it. And I've been talking to a few people who watch the show. Actually, Bob has watched the show quite a bit. And Bob actually really loves it. He loves, he loves Zachary Quinto playing the vampire and capturing these, these children in this sort of snow globe world. He really likes it. He thinks it's really inventive and really cool, man. And he says it's really nice. I don't really know much about it. I mean, I love Zachary Quinto. I love him playing his sort of evil character roles that he's done from time to time on American Horror Story. So him playing sort of those evil roles, if he's half as good in this as he was in the American Horror Story stuff, then I would actually be very interested to check this out. I like a good vampire tale, and it kind of reminds me... It kind of looks like something out of, like... Something that Stephen King would create or something. It really did. It kind of feels that that way. It, it looks really cool, actually. The the imagery and and sort of the horror aspect to it probably is really cool, actually. Now, mind you, I believe this is the last season because I believe AMC actually canceled this show because I don't know whether it was getting the ratings or not, but. Unfortunately, I think we're only going to ever get the two seasons, but Bob actually swears by this show. He actually thinks it's really great and really inventive, and he loves the horror aspects to it. So I'm going to take his, I'm gonna take his uh, recommendation. I, I think it could probably be cool. I mean, definitely let me know what you guys think. Is this worth it? I've never actually read the best-selling novel, but I heard a lot of people really praise season one. Haven't heard much about season two, but if you guys think it's really good, I might have to get into it now that the show is over might as well at least start to d dive into it i like a good vampire tale i don't like the sparkly shit i like the brutal vampires and if he's brutal right up my alley and then there are these little gems which i'm actually shocked they actually got in the blumhouse of horrors the 10 movie collection for 59.96 now i know we saw this over at best buy but they do have it over at Walmart if you guys are still looking for it. They do have that. I'm also seeing they have the Saw 8 film collection, which includes seven unrated films with this really unique horror slipcover. I want to play a game. <laughs> Very nice. I know we've seen a lot of horror slipcovers before, but I don't think I've ever seen one for the 8 film collection. Which is actually quite nice with the tricycle and everything. I actually quite like like the Saw series. It's not terrible. I enjoy most of the movies, honestly. I know it's torture porn and everything, but I actually kind of like the story, the characters, the continuity. I kind of li like that, actually. I don't know, maybe I, I'm just a sick fuck. <laughs> it's quite possible, not gonna lie, guys. Do have that. They also have that Omen Deluxe Edition collection there for $39.96, which is really nice. They also end up having this Blu-ray Digital Rambo 5 film collection for $24.96. You're not hunting him. He's hunting you. Very nice from Colonel Troutman, man. With another really unique slipcover, which I don't think we've seen ever before. Which is really nice also, man. That's actually really cool. A lot of Rambo goodness. Very nice. Nice. For all you Rambo love lovers out there, very cool. They also end up having the Critters Collection, which is really great. I love this. I actually own this box set for $29.96. Really, really great films in here. I love the cheesy sci-fi goodness with, with the Critters themselves. Really cool stuff, man. Those, those, those little devious bastards. So nice, man. The horror aspects, really cool, man. Some cool comedy stuff in here. Really cool that they have this this box set. Very nice. And for $29.96, actually, really great price on that. And then the last thing I'm seeing here, I knew it. I, I fucking knew it, man. And that is the Fly Collection. God damn it. God, I, I swear to God, man, I have never seen the Fly Collection here ever before. A lot of you guys have told me, oh, hey, I've seen it at Walmart. And I'm like, I've never seen it. And so when I saw it over at Best Buy, I picked it up because, look, I've never seen it before over at any of the other places, so I'm going to take the gamble. I paid like 60 bucks for it, to be fair. 
which is like now $20 higher than what it is here, which kind of pisses me off. But hey, man, I have the collection. I'm happy with it. But now, just, just my luck, guys. Seriously. Like, when I finally buy the box set, that's when Walmart carries it. Like, any time before, like, no, of course not. But when I finally buy it, that's when they have it. Ah, it's a rotten sons of bitches. God damn it. Oh, it's a great set, though. Honestly, it's it's. I showed it during one of my live streams. It's goddamn gorgeous, beautiful, great movies in the collection. It's, it's fucking gorgeous, dude. On honestly, and for forty bucks, that's a goddamn steal, man. Get up on that because this is really cool. I paid way more for it, but then again, I'm happy with my purchase. But if you guys find it at, at Walmart, snag it. It's well worth it. And that's honestly it, guys. I mean, really, that's it. There is no more things to really check out this week. I mean, they have other of the indie titles, but we've already seen them at some of the other locations. But all the mega releases, like those Back to the Future stuff, uh, Tremors, Streaker Island, and some of the other things, yeah, they don't have any of that. Like, it didn't come in at all. So, honestly, I guess I can't blame the first Walmart because maybe they didn't get their stock in yet. But it's just so weird that they didn't get it. You would think big name titles, they would have got that stuff hidden early, but no, not at all. So I'm glad Target definitely delivered in that department. And actually, speaking of actually slimming down a department, if you guys can see, actually, this used to be all movies. All movies. And now, again, it's all TVs again. It's all TVs. And over here, oh, on this section over here, guys, it used to be all movies again. So they've lowered the section over here at this Walmart as well. So I have a feeling at every single Walmart, they're actually lowering the physical media yet again, guys. So it's not just in my area. It's most likely in your area as well if they haven't done it already. So I was kind of curious whether it was just that one that I went to earlier or whether it was this one too. And well, as you can see, guys, it's this one as well. <sighs> Physical media is lowered yet again at another location. <sighs> I'll still continue to support physical media. It's a little sad, but it doesn't damper my hope for physical media. It just means that I just got to work harder to support it. That's all it means, guys, and I hope that means the same for you, too. Well, at least a few things to check out. And, of course, of course they have the goddamn fly co collection. Of course they do. Just my goddamn luck. <sighs> Always. But whatever, some cool stuff to check out. At least a couple things worth giving a look to here. Let's head to next location and see what they got. All right, everybody. We are at our fourth and final location. It's always good to be back at the Beast, baby. Yes, indeed. Best Buy the Beast, baby. We are back in here. Look, actually, we found some really unique stuff this time around. Some really interesting, unique releases, great big-name titles. So, I'm kind of curious what Best Buy is going to have. Could it be some cool steelbook gloves, some exclusives, some unique and interesting titles we have not seen yet? Best Buy is always that uh, unique place that you never know quite what you're going to get until you head inside. So, let's uh, go in check out all the physical media goodness all right everybody we are in at best buy and the first thing i'm seeing over here is actually the blu-ray digital of back to the future the ultimate trilogy for 29.99 but unfortunately they're out of the 4k and they're out of the ultimate steelbook trilogy edition I was really hoping they would still have some guys. Unfortunately, they are all out, man. I know Back to the Future, this trilogy is huge. It's extremely popular. It's one of these additions that I think people were really looking forward to. So, unfortunately, Best Buy, unfortunately, at least this one, is all wiped out, guys. I would have loved to have shown it off. But, yeah, apologies. But not much I can do about, about that one, guys. But... I do want to say that I am really proud of Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale. First of all, the trilogy is amazing. I, you know, to me, I've talked about it. I said how awesome it was, and it really is. It's a great 
sci-fi adventure that everybody can enjoy, anybody can relate to. But it's actually been kind of an interesting road because when Back to the Future 3 happened, they said, look, we're doing a third film and that's it. We're going to wrap it up. And they did. I thought they wrapped it up in a really nice way with the DeLorean and Doc and and Marty. I, I felt like there was a really great closure to it. And I know they did that animated show, which I, honestly, I remember watching. And I actually really do like that show. It didn't last for a long time, but I, I remember watching it and I actually really enjoyed it as a kid. I thought it was kind of cool. And Universal was always sort of hinting at maybe doing a Back to the Future 4. I know they did some Back to the Future video games and they kind of did things like, oh, what would have happened if there was another Back to the Future movie? And there was always sort of talk about, oh, maybe we'll do a fourth film, maybe we'll bring back these characters, you know, maybe Marty's son or whatever. And... uh, Actually, what's really great about it is that Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale actually own the rights to the Back to the Future franchise. They own all the exclusive rights to it. So what's really unique about that is that Universal cannot do anything with the property unless Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale sign off on it, which I think is really great because I'm not going to lie. We... We live in a time now, actually we have been for many, many decades, of sequelitis. And it really is true. Sequel after sequel after sequel. And sometimes I look at a trilogy or a series of movies and I say, okay, enough is enough. We don't really need another one in the franchise. They're just there to make money and that's it. And what's great about Back to the Future, what's great about Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale and Steven Spielberg and all those people that worked so hard on this trilogy is that in a lot of ways it felt to them like like they did it out of a creative spirit which I really appreciated which I really thought was actually the right thing to do honestly I, I, I really did man and they always felt like they were never going to do a sequel unless they had the right story, unless they felt like it was the right play to make. And when they finally did, that's when they did it. But they don't want to turn this franchise into just another cash cow. They just don't want to do it. And I appreciate that from, from those guys because there's so many franchises now that feel like Oh, of course, we get another one, and then another one, and it kind of feels like, it just kind of cheapens it, and they don't want to cheapen it, and I really appreciate that, man, I I really honestly do. Back to the Future trilogy is just that, a trilogy, and should never be anything more, and hope to God we're never going to get a Back to the Future remake or reboot, because we don't need it, man. The originals are still great to this day, No, no need to redo anything, man. And actually, not bad bonus features here. You've got the Hollywood Museum goes back to the future, back to the future, the musical behind the scenes. That's a ton of new new features, plus all the same stuff that's in, been in previous releases as well. And I got to admit, honestly, guys, that this Back to the Future series has honestly been released to death, man. It's been released through VHS constantly. It's been released through through DVD and Blu-ray and 4K. It's been now 4K, obviously. It's been done to death, man. Um, look, I, I used to own the, the DVDs. I now own the Blu-rays. And most likely, if I can probably get it, because I would love to to have gotten the Steelbook book editions, I might try to get that, that as well. I guess when you're a movie collector, if you really love something, then you're going to buy it over and over again because you just love it. And Back to the Future is one of those movies that people love and people will buy over and over again because it's, it's just the love of these movies and it's the nostalgia, and that's why people love it. And I can't blame them because I do the same goddamn thing, man. Really, really great, man. I love this trilogy so much. So goddamn classic. And what's really interesting also, guys, if you think about it, is that, you know, it was supposed to be Eric Stoltz. It was not supposed to be Michael J. Fox. And they just had a lot of problems with Eric Stoltz. He wasn't really responding to the script the way they wanted him to, the acting. 
and they replaced him like halfway through and they had to bring in Michael J. Fox and do all these reshoots and everything and I'm wondering would it have been of as classic with Eric Stoltz I don't know I, I, I think there's an alternate reality out there where there's a Back to the Future series that has Eric Stoltz in it which is nuts I would love to see it but it's an interesting I look at it Back to the Future now and I, and I see only Michael J. Fox I would have never saw Eric Stoltz but who knows man the great what ifs of life right <laughs> of course but if you guys have never seen this, it's an amazing trilogy. One of the best, honestly, and well worth your time. Not half bad, man. Not half bad indeed. Definitely well well worth it for sure, man. Not bad at all. Huh. Very interesting indeed. Well, let's see if they have anything else. And we are over on this side of Best Buy. And the first thing I'm seeing, well, I have to show this off right, right off the bat. They, they didn't have it at this Best Buy last week, but they damn sure have it this week and that is the friday the 13th huge gigantic collection for a hundred and twenty nine ninety nine man like i said this thing is fucking massive this thing is amazing baby oh my god i've talked up this this release so bad man it's it's uh, it's it's amazing honestly it's really just uh, if you're a horror lover if you're a jason Voorhees fan the friday the 13th slashers this is an amazing release you guys got to get up on now what i do want to say about this release to be honest with you guys is that screen factory did announce like within last week or something they announced that they are doing a disc replacement program so they're replacing uh part three they're replacing jason goes to hell uh, the uncut edition, and I believe they're replacing Jason X, if I'm not mistaken. I believe those are the three that, that they are replacing, those those discs. Uh, there's certain issues, audio, uh, certain stuff that's missing. And it's unfortunate that that even happened in the first place, but Screen Factory is correcting it. Now, look, I'm going to be real with, with you guys. A lot of people have shit on Screen Factory for that, all oh, the, the screw-ups and everything like that. I just want to say that no company is perfect. No company is perfect. Every company makes mistakes. I will say that again for anybody in the back who can't hear. Every company makes mistakes, okay? Every company literally makes mistakes, okay? Nobody's perfect. Everybody does an error or two. Every company's done it. Arrow and Criterion and Shout Factory, Severin, Vi 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 Vinegar, everybody does it, okay? Everybody makes mistakes. The only important stuff is that if they correct it, and Screen Factory has gone out of their way to correct it, I actually signed up for the replacement program, so I'm definitely going to get mine. Any of you guys who have gotten the set who have not heard about the replacement program, definitely look that up get your replacements in as soon as humanly possible they should be shipping out within next month or something like that but it's very important that, that you get this look regardless of the mistakes and there's only a few this is an amazing set worth diet diving into guys and as a horror lover as someone who's grown up with these friday the 13th mo movies and cherish them this set is still worth it flaws and all man by far but again i'm so glad they're doing a disc replacement program and you know, looks mistakes happen. You know, people are human. Things things go wrong. But I'm just glad they're they're being stand up and actually fixing it. So this is an amazing release. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And damn, if you can find it, so cool, man. Definitely worth getting by far, man. Then the next thing I'm seeing over here is they have the Blu-ray of the Captain's Collection for. For forty two ninety nine, wow! Really, holy shit! Ah, uh, wow. Okay, for forty two nine ninety nine for this thing, what? Explorations by William Shatner. Boldly go where no one has gone before. Kind of looks cool. Forty two ninety nine though. What is in this? Boldly telling what n no one has told before in HD Ooh, 
William Shatner sits down for five insightful interviews with the franchise's captains. Oh, okay. So he's, he has, like, in-depth interviews with all the captains of of the Star Trek franchise. Well, the ones, you know, obviously b- before, like, some of the newer Star Trek stuff, but... Let just continue. Oh, so it's four... I, it's gotta be. It says it says it's four discs. So it's a four disc set of the captain's collection with interviews from from Shatner, basically talking to all the captains. Okay. A lot of special features, man. Hmm. Interesting. But God, forty two nine ninety nine. That's so much, man. Holy shit. Damn. I mean, for any like hardcore Star Trek fan, I guess it would probably be worth it. I would think, right? I think it would have to to, to be worth it. Huh. I'm actually curious, guys. I'm actually curious. Who is your favorite Star Trek captain? Out of out of these ones, who's your favorite one? I guess if I had to say my favorite, I think it would be... I think it would have to be Picard. I mean... Kirk is a easy like runner up. Like I mean they're like neck and neck, man, but I do like the captain from Deep Space 9 though. I I always thought he was really cool. Um the Voyager captain I don't hate her. I just never really got engaged with her the way I should. Scott Bakula he, you know, he kind of paled in comparison to but I, I think for me it's always Picard, man. But the uh, you know, all the captains were unique. They were never actually a carbon copy of one another, which I really enjoyed, too. That's what made Star Trek u- unique, was each show was... Even though it was, it felt Star Trek, it felt a little bit different and unique, which is what I really enjoyed, man. Hmm. Well, I guess if you're a Star Trek lover, this might be worth getting. Interesting interviews from William Shatner with all the captains, but... forty two ninety nine, man, that is a lot. Wow. That's kind of nutty, I'm not going to lie, man. And then over here, I, I kind of noticed, if I get this away, is they actually have, oh, Adaptation, the Shout Select Edition for sixteen ninety nine. Now, this, I believe, came out this week as well, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe the week before or something. It's possible. And I'm actually really shocked to see this here at Best Buy, I'm not going to lie, simply because, like, well, actually, maybe not, because we've seen, like, some Screen Factory stuff in the past from, from from them. A lot of great Screen Factory love, so now they're getting some Shout Select stuff, which is honestly really cool, man. Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep, and Chris Cooper adaptation, man. I gotta admit, I, I actually really like this movie. It is quirky, man. It is quirky as, as a shit. Directed by Spike Jones, man. Spike Jones does some really unique movies, man. Basically, basically Nicolas Cage plays twins in this. Like, you get double the Nicolas Cage. How bad can that be? That's never a bad thing. Double Nicolas Cage? Of course, man. And he's like a struggling writer, I believe he is, or, or something. And it's just like the quirky people around him. And it's a very unique and interesting movie. I mean, when you talk about Nicolas Cage, you don't really talk about adaptation, really. You talk about, like, the really weird, insane performances from Nicolas Cage, like Vampire's Kiss or Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance or, like, Wicker Man with, like, the, the bees, the, the bees, <laughs> like, something like that. You'll, you'll, you'll do that, but not really adaptation, but it's a really quirky movie. It's not weird or oddball or anything, but it's very well done. The acting is really very fa- fantastic here. The story is re- really great, too. Yeah, it's it's not a well-known Nicolas Cage movie, but I think for his great acting ability, yeah, he's really good here, man. I'm actually really shocked us to see this one, man. Cool to actually see it. Not not bad. Some more Nicolas Cage love. And trust me, that can never be a bad thing. And speaking of more Shout Factory love, they actually have the Pumpkinhead Steelbook from Scream Factory for $22.99. Look at this. Whoa, that's awesome. Oh, look at that. That's so cool, man. Oh, some more, some more Screen Factory Steelbook. Oh, so great, man. Look at that. 
Oh, such a great horror villain monster. So good, man. Oh my god, Pumpkinhead is amazing, man. I, I, I love Pumpkinhead. Dude, it's a great horror movie. I, I love it where, like, basically Lance Henriksen plays this guy who is who his son gets killed by this sort of motorbike accident that these people accidentally hit him and he ends up sort of getting retribution from them by going to this like witch and resurrecting this sort of demon that will kill them but there's a price to pay for doing that and it's really clever I love the horror. I love the monster, man. The monster is really creative, very vicious, really tall and imposing. Really love that, man. Pumpkinhead is really classic, man. And I believe this was directed by Stan Win Winston. Yeah. I believe this is like the only thing that Stan Winston ever directed, if I'm not mistaken. It was like the only thing he ever did. But he was so good, man. The, the special effects are really good. The acting... Eh, acting can be a little over the top and cheesy, but it's... But that's fine. I mean, it's a horror flick. And, and Lance Henriksen is, is the one that does an amazing job here, man. Really cool. I really like one. They, they did make other Pumpkinhead movies. They made, like, I think, like, like three or four more Pumpkinhead movies, if I'm not mistaken. I think they did. The second one is really cheesy. But there's kind of a fun quality to it, but it's not that great. The other ones, I think, are, like, straight to, to like straight to tv dvd like sci-fi channel garbage which was really shitty but honestly the best one out of the entire franchise is the first one man now i actually already own the regular screen factory edition but this steelbook is really cool man and again for 22.99 for some steelbook love i should say screen factory steelbook love then that's definitely worth it not bad man huh really cool dude God, i can't believe to see this at this here like seeing adaptation and then seeing this double shout factory love not bad man very very cool not that then they also have a cutthroat city as well for 14.99 not bad indeed they got that they also have the blu-ray digital of alone for 16.99 now I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime, and the reason why I wanted to watch it is because, honestly, it was about zombies. I love zombies. I'm a sucker for uh, for zombies. What the, what the hell can I tell you guys? I, I really love that type of stuff. You know, I'm 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 a sucker for a zombie flick. Sometimes sometimes I should know better and not watch some of this shit but you know what look man some genres you just love and you, and you just bite the bullet what the hell you know what i mean but basically this movie is about this guy that lives in this apartment and what ends up happening is that there's this sort of zombie sort of rage i guess virus i guess you would say and basically everybody is turning into sort of these flesh-eating vicious zombie-like beings and it's this guy that's basically trapped in his apartment and he's going insane, he's going nuts and he realizes that there's actually somebody on the other side of the, the building, this woman that he's sort of connecting with and it's sort of their relationship together plus his sort of paranoia and also trying to survive this, this sort of apocalypse that's going on in his small corner of the world. Okay, so I really didn't know what to expect with Alone. I really honestly didn't. And I knew it was a sort of a zombie rage type of thing. Kind of like almost like a 28 Days Later, I would say. But here's the thing. This movie is so not 28 Days Later. Not even close, guys. Now, I'm not saying the movie's bad. Because there is moments where I really do like this movie. I like the fact that, you know, certain human beings you can't trust. You also have to fight these raging zombies that if you get the blood on your skin you'll basically turn into one of them or get bitten by by them the problem is is that you really don't get to see a lot of the zombies in fact i should honestly tell you that you really don't get to see much of the outside world in this movie it's basically mostly takes place in 
in an apartment or around an apartment building complex. That's what it does, guys. Like, I'm serious. Like, this thing is on the cheap. It really is. Like, it's not a terrible movie because some of the acting is honestly really good. But... It's, I mean, the zombie action, there's not really much zombie action here. Um, it's really only a few zombies and they're in the hallway and you kind of go out every now and occasionally and you kind of peek over and, oh, hey, there's some, some zombies and they're kind of attacking me. And you kind of, oh, I got to go back in the apartment. Like that type of thing. But truth be told, man, it's, it's really cheap. You know, yeah, man, you know... Uh, it, it's when I was watching it I thought this could be really cool this could be really clever and it could be really well done showing this guy's paranoia and the world around him and how he's trapped but it really doesn't do that all too much it's very it's it's shot well so it's not really low budget but I mean it's just one of those movies that really is a damn shame about really a guy that unfortunately you know he's just going mad and he's going nuts and he's losing his mind but it could have been done so much better it could have been done more clever it could have been done more big and sprawling with more zombies and more gru gruesome action but there's really not much and the stuff that you do see is really off camera which really sucks man it kind of reminds me there there was this sci-fi movie that came out a few years back and I'm forgetting it and I think I'm forgetting it because it's such a bad film that I really am sort of getting it out of my mind but it was one of those movies that was so cheaply made it was basically people within their apartment building and that's what they did and at the end they kind of showed a little bit of the the like the alien invasion and that was it and I was like oh my god this thing is so cheap and this is such garbage and you don't see anything and and i'm like this is what i pay my money to see and this is just the same with alone it kind of reminds me of the version of that it's just a cheap zombie film that really doesn't show you the goods and really doesn't show you the blood and gore and really doesn't even show you much outside of an apartment ah it's a great cover and i love seeing donald sutherland here he's actually one of the highlights of, uh, of the movie but to actually say the movie's good is I can't really do that guys it's, yeah I can't really it's it's passable but there's been a hell of a lot of better movies out there about zombies a hell of a lot more movies about like rage people out there that are attacking you like 20 days later this is like the cheapo version of 20 days later and that's not a good thing trust me man yeah I'd kind of stay away from alone and then I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray of Spree for $12.99. And look at that maniacal evil motherfucker right there. Good lord, man. This guy is off his goddamn fucking rocker, man. Oh, wow. Um, you know what, man? I, like I said earlier, I really love this movie. And there's a lot of reasons why. But one of the main reasons, honestly is bringing in the social media aspect because it's kind of really unique and interesting for me to kind of look at this movie as somebody in his late 30s because social media everybody wants to be relevant everybody wants to be an influencer everybody wants to have all the views and people watch them and i feel like we're obsessed to it almost to like a like almost like an unhealthy way really i mean if, if you think about it i mean oh you know oh my god i gotta go on twitter and oh geez instagram and i have to get all the likes and if i don't get all all the likes then i've got to get more than this person and there really is sort of almost like a really sort of like stalkerish aspect to to social media that really is unsettling and disturbing it really honestly is man if you really think about it and there is some movies that have kind of dealt with this to a certain degree one way or another like i was thinking of a movie like tragedy girls 
which I really do love. I think that movie is really great. If you guys have never heard of Tragedy Girls, definitely watch that. And the other one I was thinking of was Ingrid Goes West. If you guys have ever seen Ingrid Goes West, it's not really a horror movie. It's more of like a black comedy kind of thriller, I would say. But it really just... It was so how this woman was so obsessed with this other chick and wanted to be like her and and wanted to like, you know, be a part of her life and do a anything to get to get near her and next to her. It it was it's almost like it was almost like if you could redo single white female today in the social media world, that's what it would be like. Is that and it's really disturbing, man. I mean, look at that guy. He's 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 clearly out of his mind. Let's let's be real here, man. I mean, to me, I just I just thought this is just really crazy and nuts. How some guy will go this far to gain influence from people and to be liked by others. I mean, look, I'm I'm an average Joe, a simple guy, man. I really don't care if I'm liked by people. I really don't care if, if you know, everybody loves me or hates me. Like, I just do me. I I do a couple YouTube videos every now and again. I go I go to work. I bust my ass. I come home. I watch movies. I spend time with with my family and my girlfriend. I mean, that's me, man. I mean, you know, that's that's my thing. But nowadays, these teenagers and everything, they're so obsessed with it to this nth degree that I think what you're seeing now is that you're seeing a totally new horror movie emerge and that's the social media horror films things like Nerve and as I said Tragedy Girls and and it just feels like like you could make some really unique movies about social media horror you really can I mean you know obviously there's been some found footage horror flicks that have dealt with social media as well but I think that's sort of the next wave of horror films, in my opinion, is the social media horror flick. I really do, man. It's fascinating t t to me. You know, what you'll do for fame and what you'll do to be liked by pe people. And this movie is the perfect encapsulation of that. It really honestly is, man. I, I think it's fucking tremendous. I really do, man. I don't know about you guys, but I love, love this shit, man. It's awesome. Director's audio commentary, Kurt's world, social me media content as well. Oh, God. You know, look, I don't want to get into an Uber and deal with a motherfucker like this. That's why I drive myself to places, okay? I do not want to deal with fu fuckers like this dude, man. I don't care what social media platform you're on. I don't care how many followers you, you got. Stay your ass the hell away from me, bro. Seriously. Damn, man. Uh, that that was disturbing, but honestly, really fun at the same time. Yeah, I'm a sick, twisted individual. What can I say, man? <laughs> then there's Maisie Williams in The Owners on Blu-ray for $12.99 as well. And actually, one of the things I really like about this is actually one of the main villains is actually one of the guys from Doctor Who. Believe it's uh, what is it? Sylvester McCoy. Yeah, Sylvester McCoy, man, he was great in this. You know, my girlfriend is really into Doctor Who. I'm not really so much, but I gotta tell her like Doctor Who play played a played a horror character like so so great, man. And he's actually gotten more notice as an actor recently. I think he was in um, that last ho Hobbit movie as well, if I'm not mistaken. So. Yeah, he's actually done some really unique and interesting stuff as of late. Like this, but he plays a really creepy old doctor. He does a good job here, man. I just wish, honestly, the movie was better because if the movie was, and this would honestly be a great classic. But it's just so so, and a lot of times you just wish for these people to die. Yeah, shame. Then I'm also seeing they have the Blu-ray of scare package which is really great as well this looks really cool again man this looks really awesome i think this is again man as somebody who's a fan of of video rental stores like old school stuff like this movie it's kind of interesting because i don't really think there's many horror films that take place in a video rental store 
I mean, you can kind of say Scream did it a little bit, but not so much. I mean, I, I know of movies like Be Kind Rewind and Clerks and everything, which is really cool, but never like a horror movie like that. So this looks really unique and, and, and interesting, man. Definitely something I, I got to check out, dude. And some great special features, too. Really unique stuff, man, honestly. And then I'm also seeing they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of Tremors, Shrieker Island, for $19.99. Now, I am going to say a spoiler for you guys. So, if you do not want to hear a spoiler, skip the video by far. Skip it, guys, if you do not want to hear a spoiler. But, this is Michael Gross's last go-around as Bird Gummer. Why? Because he actually dies at the end of Tremor Shrieker Island, which I was not expecting. That was a total, like, wow moment. I was not expecting Burt Gummer of all crazy characters to die. But eventually, I guess he was going to have to, right? I mean, Michael Gross is getting older. He can only do so much action. And the way he dies, honestly, is kind of poetic in a way for Burt Gummer. I really won't say much more than that, but... You know, I gotta be real, because I do like Michael Gross as, as an actor. I remember him back in the day on TV in Family Ties, and he was awesome in, in that role. And he's done a lot of smaller roles on other TV shows, an episode or here, an episode two there. And he's been in movies playing side characters, but Tremors was his big thing. Like, it really made him a popular character actor because of playing Burt Gummer. And when other actors like, you know, Kevin Bacon left after the first movie and Fred Ward after the second film, there wasn't a lot of the original crew that was still around anymore. And the only person that stuck around was Michael Gross. Michael Gross was the one person out of everybody that continued to stick around. And there's something about it that I really appreciated, man, because he 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 really felt I, I don't know, it felt like maybe he owed it to the fan base to continue playing the character. And I gotta admit, like that was the highlight of any Tremors movie from like like probably like part three or four on is seeing Burt Gummer and seeing Michael Gross playing this character because honestly, some of the movies are good, some of the movies are bad. But it was Michael Gross that was the entertaining thing through all of these movies, man. And he really did a great job as Burt Gummer, honestly. He, he, he really did, man. He brought a great sort of swagger to the role, great comedic timing, and just this really gun-toting sort of one-liner badass that I do think is going to be remembered by the fan base. And I do think Burt Gummer is... I mean, I know he's a fan favorite anyways, but I think that people will will remember Burt Gummer as such a badass and, and just something that I think the fans really appreciated. And he's been in, I think he's been in all of the Tremors movies, and he was also in, if I'm not mistaken, the Tremors TV show, which only lasted, I believe, like 12 or 13 episodes. It's kind of forgotten now, but I believe he was in that also. Now, I just wish he had died in a better movie, man, because, uh, you know, I kind of wish that Jamie Kennedy would have been here, the son, uh, to have sort of a heartwarming moment with the dad. Uh, I was hoping for maybe some of the characters from the previous films to sort of pay their respects. You do get a tribute to Burt Gummer, but again, it's not crazy or anything. But what I will honestly say, guys, is that... You know, there's about seven Tremors films, and I gotta say, I like maybe three or four of them, but the Tremors franchise always felt like a franchise that really sort of ran out of steam a long time ago. But as a horror lover and as a fan of the series, I stuck around because I love I love Burt Gummer, I, I, and I love the series for good or bad, the Graboids are cool, and... I kind of hope that they don't make any more Tremors movies after this. I really do. I hope they kind of stay away from, from that. I really hope they do kind of do it because after Burt Gummer dies, there's really no real reason to continue the franchise anymore. There's really not, man. Uh, Burt Gummer was a true original. No one's ever going to replace that motherfucker. And Michael Gross is an amazing, badass guy who gave life to this really amazing character. So for me... 
I'm going to miss Burt Gummer like crazy, but I'll always remember Burt Gummer as a a a red meat eating gun toting badass motherfucker that took out gr- graboids and did it with style, baby. And a lot of cool one-liners. Not bad, bad man. So, if you're looking for a little more Burt Gummer love and the final time to see him as Burt Gummer, Tremors, it's what you get, man. Not bad. God, gotta love a badass. And he is definitely a true, true badass indeed, man. Not half bad. All right, and not half bad, actually, this week. Some really interesting releases, some stuff we haven't seen, some exclusives, some unique titles. Very, very unique and interesting indeed. Not bad, guys. All right. Hmm. Pretty good this time around. Let's head out. They actually make Bob Ross plushies. Very interesting indeed, guys. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Okay. (laughs) Quite the things you can find over at Best Buy, guys. And speaking of the great things you can find, man, I got to admit that this time around, actually some really unique and interesting titles, stuff we had not seen at some of the other stores. Yeah, unfortunately, we uh, did not be able to get the Back to the Future Steelbook Love, unfortunately, or the exclusive, which I was really honestly hoping for. But that being said, man, still not bad here at the Beast, man. Like I said, some Shout Select Love, Screen Factory Steelbook Love, and some interesting indie titles as well. I mean, look sometimes you can't always win at every location and find everything you want but for the most part i'm pretty pleasantly pleased by by the beast and i hope you guys are too in fact most of actually what we found this time around was actually pretty cool and some unique top titles at most every place we went to not half bad man i hope you enjoyed it at the wonderful beast as well awesome stuff this week not as much as i would have liked to have seen at times but could have been far worse indeed all right not bad Let's head home and finish the video. All right, everybody, that'll do it for the Blu-ray and DVD out and about video this week. And this week actually kind of surprised me quite a lot, actually, because when you looked on paper, you saw one big release on one end, one big release on the other, and... A lot of really small indie titles in between. And I didn't quite know how that was going to translate into actually like what we were going to see in stores. And so I thought, God, are we really going to see much at all? What are these stores going to carry? The variety? I was just a little worried that there wasn't going to be a lot to really check out this week. And surprise, surprise, because it turned into something I was not expecting, man, because... All of these stores had some really unique media this time around. A lot of really great indie titles and a lot of a lot of media that I just wasn't expecting this time around. And what was really great is that every single store had something unique and something interesting, some release, some title that we didn't see at any of the other stores. And so this week ended up really surprising me in a big bad way and I guess that's why we do the out and about videos right because as I've said many many multiple times you don't really know what you're gonna find until you enter into these stores and this week is the perfect example of that a week that you know when you looked on blurry.com didn't seem like something that had a lot of things to to show off in the stores but ended up actually being quite the opposite and ended up being really awesome to see a lot lot of that stuff at the stores man some really cool releases and yes we didn't get to see one of the bigger releases which is that 4k steelbook collection for the back of the future trilogy but i did want to say that i did end up actually going to the second best buy location to just see on the off chance whether they were actually going to have it and yeah no 
they didn't have it. And I even talked to an employee at that first Best Buy location that I go to, and he was like, dude, we didn't get a lot. He was, he was honest. He was like, yeah, we didn't get a ton, man. And we had to save some of them for people who pre-ordered, so there wasn't a lot to go around. And he basically did say that it sold out before the afternoon. He said, yeah, this thing just flew right off the shelves. And I hate to say it, but it's the story with a lot of these steelbooks, man. Steelbooks are just getting really insanely popular, especially the the ones that are highly sought after, man. I mean, you're going to be paying out the nose on eBay for this stuff. I mean, you really honestly are. They're jacking the prices up. Collectors who really want these titles and these editions are just going and buying, you know, edition after edition. So if you want it, you really either have to be the first one in the store or just buy it online, man. I mean, that's honestly your best bet because, I mean, could we see it in the next week or two at Best Buy? It's possible. I mean, anything's possible at this point, but I was thinking about, like, uh, I think a couple weeks back or something, I had shown you guys that Best Buy had gotten a couple you know, uh, steelbook editions back in for Hocus Pocus. And I was looking today and I was like, oh my God, they are gone. They're all gone, man. And they might've been gone, you know, really soon after I saw them. But I think with the really popular titles, with the editions that people want, they fly off the shelves, man. And so your best bet with any of these editions, and I know we're always like, Hey man, I want to see it in the stores. I want to do, I, I want to go on the hunt, right? Sometimes, not going to lie, the hunt is actually on your computer, <laughs> okay? The hunt clearly is on your computer because some of these additions, man, I'm going to be real with you guys. You really can't take a gamble going into these stores because sometimes you really are going to be shit out, out, out of luck. And, and I know I get criticized a lot sometimes for like, buying a lot of this stuff through online but again these are additions that are not coming to any stores anytime soon and even the ones that do fly off the shelves really quickly so i'm happy pre-ordering stuff i'm happy going online and doing that because nowadays if you want it you have to find the best way to secure it and sometimes that's simply through online i hate to say it but the way that some of the physical media is going in stores, that seems to be the trend anyways. So, might as well get used to it. I am actually interested in picking up the Steelbook collection, and that's one of the reasons why I was hoping it was actually at the stores. But, I think again, like I said to you guys, my best bet might actually be through online. Because, you know, who knows, even if it's in the store, God, it might go really fast, because... You know how people are, man. Scalpers on eBay, anybody, they'll snatch it up and then sell it for a, a bigger price. I see it on eBay. I see it on Facebook. I see it all over the place, man. So the collector's market is huge, and when they want to take advantage of it, they definitely will. So if you like something like the Steelbook Collection or any other Primo title, I think you know what your best bet is, guys. Just saying. But there is a lot of really, really great titles that did come out this week. Hopefully you picked up something good. As far as I'm concerned, well, I actually got a few packages uh, in the mail, honestly. And the first one I got is actually one from Best Buy. <laughs> so, uh, actually it's a Mill Creek title, to be fair with you. And this, this movie, okay... This movie is considered to be one of the worst movies of all time. Dead serious. This is considered one of the worst films ever. So why the hell did I pick it up, man? Why? Why did I pick up that something that is widely considered as one of the worst movies of all time? Well, to be fair to you guys, I watched this in the movie theater, and I kind of have a nostalgic soft spot for it. It, it is, to me, one of those so-bad-it's-good movies. 
and I haven't watched it in a really long time. Now, mind you, I've never ever owned it on VHS or DVD. So this is brand new to the collection, but when Mill Creek announced this, I thought, my God, this is getting a special edition? Like, I thought to myself, God, if this can get a special edition, then, well, shit, anything can get a special edition at this point, man. My God, I mean, anything's possible at this point. Good Lord, man. It is a bad movie, to be fair, but I enjoy it, and God, I haven't seen it in a long time, so I can't wait to rewatch this this sucker. It's going to be quite unique. Then I also got a package in the mail, actually Royal Mail, I should say, uh, from 88 Films in the UK. Now, this is a Roger Corman horror sequel, okay? It's a sequel to a cult classic horror flick, and it's actually a sequel that launched the career of a very famous movie director. I won't say much more than that, but this movie is really cheesy, it's ridiculous, it's over the top, doesn't make a lick of fucking sense, but it's really fun, and 88 Films put out a cool little special edition of it, so I decided, what the hell, I've never had it in the collection, so might as well give it a go. So definitely looking forward to this one for sure. And last but certainly not least is a package from Diabolic DVD, baby. They love me, what can I tell you? This is actually an Arrow video release, actually one of the more newer Arrow video titles. And this is a movie that I remember really loving, you know, back when I was growing up, man. It's, it's a mid-90s movie, it's a great comedy. And it's a movie that I really fell in love with, being somebody who loved comic books, loved hanging out with friends at the mall, and the wacky hijinks. And this movie is one that initially never got the love it truly deserved, but over time has sort of become more widely known, and people have gotten into it more. I do love the movie. I I did own it on a regular Blu-ray, but when Arrow Video announced it, it was just a easily a must-buy, man. So I'm definitely happy to pick up this edition. So a little Arrow Video love, some 88 films horror goodness, and so bad it's good, Mill Creek. Some really unique stuff this time around, guys, but you will not get to find out exactly what I picked up until my Blu-ray pickup video, which will drop sometime next month. It'll show off all of the titles that I picked up for the month of October, and guys, you know I get some weird stuff, man. Some weird B-movie cheese, retro titles, 80s, 90s, limited editions, collector's editions, out-of-print love. I get some really unique oddities, man. And October is definitely another one of those really great months that has a lot of really cool physical media that I can't wait to show you guys. Trust me, you definitely will not be disappointed. And before I let you guys go... I wanted to talk about something that connects to the Disney Plus story that I talked to you guys about earlier. And that is the fact that there's a story going around about how movie studios could buy movie theaters in order to save them, but they're choosing not to. And some people on some sides think that this is a bad idea, and some think it's a good idea. Now, see, here's the deal. A judge ended up, through certain, you know, um, legislation, whatever, ended up actually putting it out there that now movie studios are able to buy up these movie theater chains if they're willing to do that. And no movie theater has actually taken the bait on that. None of them really want to go there at this point. It's kind of interesting because on one hand, movie theaters are hurting. Okay, let's be real here. Movie theaters are incredibly hurting. They're... They're losing a lot of money, they're losing staff, they're, they're basically, every single day there's some kind of struggle and some kind of issues, and 
they are just reeling at this point. Would movie studio money, if they were to buy them, help to boost these movie theaters up? Yes, it would. A hundred percent truthful, yes, it would. Okay, no doubt. And in some ways, maybe they need to. Because, as I showed you guys last week, movie theaters, just because they say they're temporarily closing, doesn't mean temporary. Sometimes it means closing for good. And with an influx of cash from a movie studio, that might keep these places afloat enough for when next year comes and there's a flood of movies and people will want to go see it. Okay, that's a good thing. Then there's the flip side of the conversation, okay? Now the flip side is that this could be a very harmful thing if they were to buy these movie theaters. The reason being is, let's say that they do. Let's say that they save the movie theaters by buying up a whole bunch of them. You know, Paramount buys this much, and, you know, Warner Brothers buys this much, and Disney buys this much, and, and you know, Universal buys this much, whatever. They all agree we're going to pitch it and buy a certain amount, and we're going to save the movie theaters. Okay, yay, cool, yay, whatever. Movie theaters are saved. But then what happens? Because think about it, you know, a movie studio could be greedy and could say, oh, well, by the way, we don't, we don't want to play any of the other films from these other studios. Our theaters are going to play our movies. Now, if those other movies from the other studios want to be played on our screens, they need to give us a certain amount of, uh, of a fee to rent our movie theaters out in order to show their movies. And then the other studios will say, well, if they're doing that, then I'm going to charge a fee as well. And then, in fact, I'm going to charge a higher fee because they screwed us over in the first place. And then it becomes this tit-for-tat issue, and then suddenly suddenly you might be in a part of a of an area where unfortunately you miss out on all of these movies because you know one studio is fighting with the other and movie theater chains are caught in the crossfire I'm not saying that's going to happen but it is a possibility and also let, let's be real that that movie studios Movie studios buying movie theaters is kind of a conflict of interest, isn't it? I mean, in all reality, it honestly is. Because, you know, again, it's like, well, if they buy this theater, then they're more likely to get on four or five screens more than the other competition and vice versa. And, you know, and then it'll be a demographic thing right? Oh, well, this movie plays better in Wisconsin than it does in in Cincinnati and, by, and vice versa. And suddenly, suddenly it's a politics game. And I don't think really anyone wants to go there. Look, at the end of the day, I think these movie studios are very scared to get into that game. But more than being scared, I don't think they want to invest in movie theaters at this point because they see how vulnerable these theaters are. They see how vulnerable that that basically a a once viable option for their movies is now going the way of the dinosaur. And now they see streaming as the thing that's going to save them. Like I said, they've seen... M Mulan. They've seen how that's worked. They've seen Trolls World Tour. They've seen uh, Bill and Ted face the music. And they've seen how they've done pretty good in profit. And, and they say, why should we invest in movie theaters when streaming is sort of the next best thing? The next 
viable option that we can have to put our movie out there and we don't need the theaters. So why buy something that in the long run might not be around? Well, it might not be around because you're not supporting it. And so in essence, the movie studios are screwing themselves over. They just don't realize it yet. And so it's all a game at this point. It's pretty much a game of chicken, if we're going to be real here. That's what it is. For good or bad, it's a game of chicken. And who's going to blink is really the, the question. Are movie studios going to blink or is movie theaters going to blink? I, I, I just don't know at this point. I mean, there's been so many articles written about how nobody wants to go to the movie theaters and how, you know... COVID has basically screwed everything and will continue to screw it into 2021 and theaters are just doomed. Now, there is some hopeful news, like in New York, our governor has opened up movie theaters to about 25% capacity, which is great. However, all of the Regal cinemas are now closed until next spring. So really, in my area, there will only be one movie theater that will actually be open, and that's it. But does that mean that the blockbusters are going to come back to 2020? No, they're still going to stay in 2021. Just because New York, a big market, opened up doesn't mean that, that movie theaters are going to like coerce these movie studios to put out their releases in 2020. No, these studios aren't going to trust the movie theater system. So as I said, it's it's a long game of chicken. For good or bad, it, it honestly is, man. And so the only way this is going to get solved is, again, if, if the movie theaters and the movie studios come to some sort of understanding. And if they come to this understanding and if they, un and if they realize the importance of everything, that they need one another then it'll work out. But again, one, one person in this, the studios are looking the other way and looking at other viable options and movie theaters are just sort of that, that homeless person on the street that's begging for change. So, so I just don't know how is it going to pan out. I just don't know, man. And at this point, there is so much unpredictability in the world that it's just literally a wait-and-see game. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. It's very unique and very interesting. Who's going to win out in the end? Who the hell knows, man? But um, uh, it'll be quite interesting to find out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday videos I've done. Movie reviews, movie hunting, live stream, Blu-ray pickup videos. I just released my Blu-ray pickup video for August. It's a really great video. A lot of awesome titles I got. So definitely check that out. And also, by the way, stay tuned this weekend for the Halloween Horror Movie Playlist Part 2, baby. I told you we were going to be doing it, and it was going to come out in October, and I am going to deliver, guys. The Halloween Horror Movie Playlist, we had a blast with this one. So much fun and hilarity and just great horror movies to talk about. It's going to be a blast, guys. I, I cannot wait to show you that video. And if you haven't watched Part 1, definitely do it. And stay tuned to everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos from time to time on social media as well. All right, guys. I will see you back next week for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video. Take care, everybody, and happy hunt.